Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Waiters Academy free online wine course lesson 2. Today we will discuss service, wine service. We're gonna start with the glassware, we're gonna go to opening a bottle of wine, decanting a bottle of wine, testing a wine like a pro. Because it's very important when you're providing a wine service for your guests to know exactly the steps and to perform those steps with finesse, with authority, with you know high self-esteem. So those people see that you know what you're doing. Because for me, the wine service is what will separate you from everybody else in the restaurant. Everybody can carry plates, everybody can take an order, everybody can do a little small chat with the people. But can you decant a wine? Can you Test a wine really looking like a pro, that's going to separate you from the rest of the waiters. Coming up. Green salad with French dressing. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the lesson two, wine service. The first thing we're gonna discuss is the wine glasses. Everybody knows wine glass, you have red wine glass, you have white wine glass, you have a sweet wine glass. White wine glass is smaller than the red wine glass. This is typical. Uh, the size is, depends on the restaurant, how much money they want to spend on glasses and everything like that, how fancy the restaurant is. So, you can have white wine glass between 30 and 20 ounces and the red wine glass between 17 and 30 ounces. But what's important here is to know and suggest to your guests a special glass for the wine. And so you know which glass to suggest because this is what's going to set the service and the experience of your guests further. When you're having a guest coming to the restaurant and he orders something like a little bit more expensive wine, doesn't need to be really expensive wine, but a little bit more expensive wine than the regular, the regular wine you're serving in the restaurant. It's always nice to appreciate that and suggest the guest takes the wine in a special glass. Most of the restaurants have their regular glasses for white wine and red wine, but they also have Burgundy glasses and they also have Bordeaux glasses. Now, so I want you to pay attention here very well because this, like I said, will impress, that's gonna give the first impression to your guest and that's what's gonna set the tone for the rest of the evening. <clears throat> the guest come and he orders, for example, some nice Pinot Noir. Not the normal Pinot Noir that's 15 bucks or whatever, and you're busy and you don't have time to pay attention to the guests and stuff like that. But of course, even if he orders a $15 bottle and if you're not so busy, you have time, you still can offer them a Burgundy glass because Pinot Noir is, is, should be drunk from Burgundy glass. Now, what is a Burgundy glass? It's a white round glass. And what this, this glass is, it collects aroma. So when you have a wine that has really fruity flavors, you know, complex flavors that you want the guest to really enjoy, then you suggest them take the wine in a Burgundy glass. But it's not just the point to suggest it, you know, to make them feel good because a lot of guests don't understand that. And it's very important that you explain for them why they should take the, the wine in the Burgundy glass. So, you see the guests, they're a little bit fancier, they order a little bit more expensive wine. You tell them, listen guys, I will serve the wine in a Burgundy glass because this is a Pinot Noir. We have Burgundy glasses here. Pinot Noir should be drunk in Burgundy glasses because the Burgundy glass collects the aroma of the wine so you can fully enjoy it. 
And they would just look at you like, whoa, of course we're going to take it in a Burgundy glass if you have Burgundy glass. <clears throat> so further on with the wine course, you're going to learn what is a Burgundy wine and what is a Bordeaux wine and what is this and that. And which wine have more tannin and which wine have more acidity and flavors and so on and so. And you will be able to immediately distinguish which type of glass should you suggest to your guest. <clears throat> But basically, if somebody order a Chardonnay, you know, this is a Burgundy grape or Pinot Noir, Burgundy grape, you should offer them a Burgundy glass. And like I said, if you are very busy and somebody is ordering just a normal uh, glass of wine or, or just a normal bottle of wine from the house wine and stuff like that, and you don't have time to pay attention to these kind of things, it's okay. Just bring them a normal red wine glass or white wine glass, serve them. But if you have the time, Make sure that you take this extra step to impress your guests. This is how we make extra tip, guys. So, now, like we said, Burgundy glass is a glass that collects the aroma of the wine inside the glass. It's a large bowl with a large opening. So when the guests are drinking the wine, their, their nose actually enters the glass and all the aroma from the wine that's collected inside the glass is just hit them in the nose and they can enjoy the wine more. <clears throat> and the other one type of glass, special type of glass, is the Bordeaux glass. The Bordeaux glass is not so large, but it's very long walls. You see, it's still big glass, very big glass, but it's not so round and it has very high walls. What that makes is, those type of glasses are said to mitigate the tannin. So you drink something like heavy Cabernet Sauvignon, aging oud. So this has really heavy tannin. And when you put it in the glass like that, it's said that it takes off the tannin, helps to mitigate it, helps to balance, to round the tannin, and then you can enjoy the wine better. Of course, wines like that is always good to be decanted but then after decanting it serve them in the bordeaux glass and that's going to help even further you know ease the tannin and you can feel more of the flavors this is what you have to remember when you are suggesting a different type of glass than the normal glass in your restaurant and there's uh, one more thing guys pay attention when you have many tables and you're for a, a glass like that to a table and then the rest of the tables are seeing that you're you know, suggesting something special to the table, but you have not suggested them, you should know why, and you should be able to explain to those uh, people you know, what's happening and so on, so on, so on. So, so um, that's why it's so important to know when to suggest those type of glasses and, and how to suggest them and how to explain that. This is all about glasses. You don't need to know nothing else. Uh, we go into decanting and aerating wine. Many people get confused. Um, many people just use the term decanting, but most of the time they are actually are talking about aerating wine. And why is that? Because when you're decanting wine, you are actually aerating wine too. But when you're just aerating wine, it doesn't mean that you decant, because decanting means that you separate the deposit inside the bottle of the wine from the drinkable part of the wine. That's what decanting means. And that's why we are using the candle so we can see through the bottle. And once you see those sediments starting to pour into the decanter, you stop. Uh, when you're aerating wine, you can aerate very young wines, you know, that has, for example, a lot of acidity, uh, you know, that helps also takes the oxygen, uh, balance the wine and so on. So. Uh, of course, wine with a lot of uh, tannin also need to, to, to take some oxygen to be some to take some air. Very old wines like you know uh, those uh, chateau wines in uh, in French that they are aged for 20, 30 years and things like that. So um, <clears throat> aerating, you know, is part of the decanting, but decanting is not part of the aerating. So it's not the same. But most of the guests will just ask you to decant the wine. They're not going to tell you, can you please aerate our wine? They will just say, can you please decant our wine? You will make decision if you are going to decant the wine with a candle 
or you're just gonna pour the wine into the decanter to get some oxygen. You know what kind of wine they order, you know if there are deposits inside, or it's just the normal wine that you need to get some oxygen into it so it tastes better. What do you need when you're decanting wine? Now, for aerating wine, you don't need nothing much. You need just the decanter, wine opener. You open the wine and you just pour it inside the decanter. You can shake it a little bit, watch the videos, everything explained there. Uh, so the wine gets some air and that's it. And then you just leave it for like 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Some wine need two hours, you know, to, to get the oxygens and start really testing to their fullest extent, you know, top. So um, it depends on the wine and um, you're going to learn uh, further what wine, how much time it needs. All those wine cards that I created for you, we're going to learn them in the next lesson. Uh, you, will, you will have exactly how much time you should decant a certain type of grape and certain type of wine. Now. For aerating, like I said, we don't need so much uh, things, but for decanting wine, we need a little bit more. You can decant the wine directly on the table of the guests, but uh, this should be a big table. If you don't have place on the table because decanting takes a lot of space, uh, you, it's better if you do it on the Geridon. You need the wine opener, you need a wine basket. If you have very rare old wine, that has been laying down in the cellar for years. Um, you don't move this bottle around, you don't straighten it up. It just has to remain laid down. So you need a basket. Watch the video about sommelier service, you know, decanting very old wines, and you will find out what I mean. Um, but yes, you need a wine basket when you have this kind of wine. Then you need decanter. You need a candle, very short candle. Make sure it's a short candle. It's not a long candle because then you're going to have problems uh, keeping the wine in the decanter on top of the candle. Um, you need a small plate, a coaster, you know, because once we open the cork, we put it under a plate and the guests can expect, inspect that. You need a napkin to wipe the cork, to wipe the, the bottle, the neck of the wine and so on and so. And of course, like I said, you need a Geridon. And then, of course, you have to follow the steps. They are right here, you know, steps of decanting wine. And this here is where you're gonna find, you're gonna see the video about decanting very old aged wine in a wine basket. So make sure that you've seen that. It's gonna be rare, but might happen and you should be prepared and you should know what to do and how to do it, guys, all right? And now we come to the, like mostly um, the, presentation type you know when you're opening a bottle of wine for your guests many times you will have to test that but testing the wine doesn't mean that you open the wine put it in a glass and you just take a sip no it's not like that testing a wine is like art and you should know exactly how to do it and perform that in front of your guests so you really show them that you know what you're doing and they can trust you and next time they come to the restaurant, they will just say, you know what? Hey, we want this guy and we want him to choose our wine and we want him to open it, test it and serve it for us. And that's it. And this is what makes you really feel special. So you bring the wine to the table, decanting or no decanting. That's a decision to make. You will see if the guests make it or you make it. And then the bottle is open. The wine is decanted. It's time to test it. You pour a little sip into the bottle, not as much as this guy has here, but this is just a picture of a, a you know, winemaker looking at his wine, but, but this is basically what you're going to do, guys. Now, you put a little sip in your wine glass and you look at it. Now, we are looking directly at the wine, maybe at some um, light or some light uh, white uh, tablecloth or something that's light so you can see through and what are we looking for you know if the wine has more red tint then it's more likely that it has a high acidity if it's more purple color you know then it's less acidity 
if there's a really deep red colors, you know, that most probably the wine has very high tannin. And then if the wine is pale, you know, like towny pale wine, then that means that this most likely this wine was aged for a long time in the oak barrels, you know. Now, I need you to learn that because this is part of the test, of course, but this is what, what you will tell the guests if they ask you, what are you looking for, you know? So you take the wine glass, you look at it, and you know, if you're just performing, if you're just acting, not exactly knowing what you're looking at and, and, and what you're doing, and the guest is very curious and ask, hey, what are you looking for? And you don't know the answer, that's gonna be really embarrassing. So, yes, we have to perform, it's fine art, but you also need to know why you're doing this, all right? So make sure you learn that, uh, and when the guests ask, you can, you can explain. White wines, you know, if the color is deep or gold, that means that's been aged. If it's a fresh white, really crystal clear wine, that's probably has more acidity. Um, and then of course the rosé wines, you see if the skin's been longer in the wine, it's gonna be a deep rosé color. If it's less, then it's gonna be uh, just a lightly rosé. Um, that means, you know, when it's deep, that means the skin's been there more, and that definitely mean more tannin, you know? And if it's a very light uh, rosé color, that means that it's gonna be very light on tannin, and so on and so on. And of course, once uh, we look at the wine, we're looking for the viscosity, you know? There are some really dark, big wines, that you cannot see through, and there are some light red wines, and of course uh, the white wines is uh, not much about viscosity there. Now, <clears throat> I gave you all the colors, and it's a good thing that you learn them. Um, at least the most important one, like like uh, you know yellow, gold, amber. Then you have pink and salmon, you know, differentiate between the pink, salmon, and then the copper, you know, a little bit more deeper. Um, then, of course, the red wine, you know, because this is what's going to be the, 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 the hardest uh, to differentiate. The brown, when it's brown, you know, it's going to be brown when it's really aged for a long time in the oak barrels and take from the wood, you know, it's going to go brown. The purple, that's... You know, when you red, you know, silver purple wine, you immediately see it like like a blau Frankish. It's so purple, and then ruby that's gonna be crystal red wine, um, and all those kind of things. But um, please make sure that you um, you learn those colors, and little bit by little bit, it's not gonna happen from the first day, but it's gonna happen a little bit by little bit. Just you're gonna get into the. Uh, all the details in the wine and once you see it you will be able to tell your guests a lot of things about it and so and so now we're done with the watching the wine you, you already decided if it's a if it's a age if it's a more acidity you know like if, is there more purple wine or it's a more red or it has some um, <clears throat> downy colors and so and so and then it comes time to smell the wine you know so Smelling the wine is the next step. You, you know, smell the wine to, to feel all the bouquet inside, you know, the flavors. You feel the flowers, you see, you feel the, the wood if it's aged and all those kind of things. And uh, of course, by smelling the wine, we are discovering if there are some faults in the wine, all right? <clears throat> when you're smelling, you're looking for, you know, is there fruit flavors like uh, blackberries, like cherries, is there herbal flavors, uh, or is aged and have some oak flavors or vanilla flavors because different oaks give those vanilla or, or um, uh, pepper um, flavors and stuff like that. Is it spicy and things like that? So um, these are the things that we're looking for. Uh, the aroma of the wine is a big part of the quality, you know? So you want wine that really have a, a nice aroma, 
uh, not just the alcohol to drink uh, directly and you don't feel nothing you don't smell nothing um, there are thousands of different aromas that you're gonna find in the wine uh, people with uh, more sensitive nose will have uh, you know advantage here uh, people with not so much sensitive nose not so much advantage but you still can smell something uh, and you can talk a little bit about it so how you smell the wine you know you bring the glass next to your nose and you take a little sniff you know just a real quick sniff then you shake the wine you shake the glass you know shake it so it takes a little bit more fresh air and, and you know it goes around and on the walls of the wine so you get the flavors you know better and it collected inside the glass and then you take a little you know a really deep slow uh, sniff with and and then you're gonna feel you know the the real flavors of the wine then take a pause you know you know take a pause relax wait for those flavors to to go through your nose and um and then you will be able to say something about it if you want to say something about your guest but usually you will say something mm, man i can feel the blackberries inside i can feel the vanilla i can feel the cherry and all those kind of things um it's a beautifully blended beautifully balanced uh so you know your guests really get prepared to drink something very special of course if the wine smells like a cork that means it's bad and you don't serve it to your guest um, but um, hopefully not hopefully you can feel the fruit flavors the minerals the herbs the oak you know the wood inside the the, the wine and all those kind of things uh, you will uh, read the lesson and you will for example you know american oaks adds more dill and coconut flavors you know very strange but that's exactly how it is european oaks add vanilla flavors to the wine um, and so on and so on but first we look at the wine second we smell the wine you know and i give you here all the aromas that you should be looking for once you're smelling the wine black fruit say black cherry blackberry uh, black currant you know then you have red fruit like a cherry strawberries cranberries raspberries then you have dried fruit tropical fruit you know pineapples or kiwi or mango oranges and stuff like that and so on so on so on so on. you will learn that because it's very important like i said when you're doing something to to really be able to explain and then of course when you smell the wine it's always good to say to your guests hey you know what oh man this is amazing i can feel the citrus inside you know um, and i can feel the oak inside i can feel the blackberries you know you prepare them so when you drink the wine once you have already told them it's inside their brain you know and the smell comes from the brain it doesn't come from nowhere else they drink that and I say, oh yes i can feel that i can feel the blackberries guys this is what helps you establish a connection with your guest uh, very very important if you want to be a top waiter if you want to work in top restaurants in the world if you want to make a really amazing money this is what you need to know and what you need to do now like i said when we are smelling the wine we're looking for some faults because uh, then you know we this you know discover if the wine has been uh, taken care of or is, is damaged and it's not drinkable and things like that you will find out what kind of faults you can find here oxidation reduction cork taint and stuff like that i don't need to discuss that we are going to the next step of wine testing and this is the actual testing of the wine now how do we test the wine we have looked at it we have smelled it and now it's come time to take a little sip in your mouth and test it with your tongue you take a small sip like i said you know you spread it all over your mouth maybe you take a little bit of uh, air inside while the wine is still inside you will see those uh, sommelier people they just take the thing they, they... the fresh air helps you know first of all bring the flavors of the wine out and second of all it takes all the flavors inside your mouth throat 
and you can feel it better. And then, of course, you swallow uh, if you're allowed to. I, you know, sometimes it's not, you spit, but I mean, most of the time in the restaurant, you don't spit the wine, you swallow this little sip. It's not gonna, um, you know, take nothing of you. And then you exhale through your nose. So all those little flavors that you enter inside your throat when you're taking the, the, the little fresh air with the wine inside of your mouth, you exhale them through your nose and you, then you feel the, the two complete, you know, bouquet of the wine. Now, what we are looking for when we are testing the wine? Sweetness. Is there a sweet notes or it's completely dry? We're looking for acidity. You know, acidity is very important. We already discussed that in the lesson number one. A lot of people don't take acidity lightly. So you should look for acidity and make sure that you tell your guests um, if the wine is uh, too acid or, or maybe has some nice flavors, freshness and stuff like that. I mean, how bitter is the wine? Alcohol, you know, is it burning your throat or it's it's very nice and pleasant uh, feeling like warming your throat, warming your mouth. Of course, the body of the wine. Is it a very complex, you know, you feel the fruit, you feel the tannins, you feel the acidity, the, the sweetness and everything mixed, blended very well. Um, and how intensive the flavors are and things like that. It's the body of the wine. Then, of course, you're looking at the finish, you know. It's amazing wine when you have really long and pleasant finish. Yeah, I mean, this is, I love to drink wines that, that, that have a really long and pleasant finish. And, um, you know, even if the wine, when you just take the first sip and you don't feel that much flavors and stuff, but the finish then just start keep popping up out of your mouth and your tongue and you just feel the, the flavors, uh, that, that's amazing, that's amazing feeling. So you're looking for the uh, finish and then dimensions. Is it a complex wine? There's a different, many dimensional wine. You know, when, when you have many different flavors, you know, first you smell it and you see, oh, it's blackberries. And then you drink it and you feel like uh, uh, the, the cherries or the, citru the citrus. And then the finish comes and it's a completely different flavor. That means that this wine is a complex, it's a multi-dimensional wine. Those are one of the best wines in the world. Uh, so this is what you're looking for. Uh, remember those guys, you know, when you're testing the wine, even if you don't test the wine, if you already establish connection with the guests and they are testing the wine, but they are not so well, you know, you know, a lot of people will tell me, well, let me test it, but I mean, I don't understand nothing about wine. That's a perfect opportunity to you to explain what they should be looking at when they're testing the wine, you know, like, don't worry about it, test it. If you like it, if you like it. But what you'd be looking for is, is it tannin too much or it's a, it's a well balanced with the acidity and the sweetness. And then of course, is the alcohol burning your throat or it's just warming your throat and mouth and, uh, and, and how complex is the body and the finish of the wine. That's what you should be looking at. You know, and once you say this to your guests, man, they will be like, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about, really. Um, and uh, hey, that's it pretty much about uh, testing the wine, guys. Don't forget, testing the wine doesn't mean that you just sip, uh, put the wine in the glass and you just take a little sip. No, you look at the wine, you smell the wine, and then you take the little sip, and that's what testing the wine means. Opening the bottle of wine, I put this here because I, like I always say, you know, whatever you perform in the restaurant, if you are able to perform that with finesse, that's going to really make the difference, you know, because your guests are watching you all the time. You're right there in front of the guests. You do service for this table, but the next tables are also seeing what you're doing. And when you do everything with finesse, that, that's really what, what, uh, gives you a uh, complete authority over your station and people start thinking, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. I will come next time and I will looking for this guy because 
I want to be served by a professional who, what, who knows what, uh, what he's doing, what he's talking about. And that's why I put here this uh, wine open techniques. Um, I'm not going to go through that. That's very simple. Uh, you read it step by step, uh, how you hold the bottle when you're cutting the, the foil, how you remove the foil. Then when you're using the wine opener, make sure that you hold your hair exactly like that so you can puncture the cork in the, perfectly in the middle. Um, then when you're pulling, you know, make sure you're using a two-step wine opener to leverage and uh, you know, this is, it's gonna help you a lot. Don't use the old ones with the one step. And, um, and then of course, once you pull the cork, how you're not pulling it directly out and making a big pop and even spraying some wine out of the bottle and things like that. Make sure that you're pulling it with your fingers, with your hand very slowly, very nice uh, by, by turning it left and right. Uh, it, like it's shown here and then right here you know if you're not going to test the wine if the guest will test the wine you know how much wine you should pour in the bar in the glass not too much not too less make sure that you know all those kind of things and of course the last you know point of the of the lesson is how to open a champagne bottle um, I think this is very important because every one of us who works in a restaurant, uh, once in a while, you're going to have to open a champagne bottle or a sparkling bottle of wine, uh, especially if you're working Christmas time, or you're working uh, birthday parties, you're working uh, New Year Eve. Um, I mean, there will be a lot of champagne bottles on the tables and you will have to assist your guests because not every guest is able to open their own bottle of champagne. Uh, so it's important to know how to do that. Watch the videos, please, and you will um, have the idea. Of course, the most important thing is after you learn the lessons and watching those videos, guys, to practice that, you know. Try to find a way to practice to open the bottle of wine with the finesse, to open a champagne bottle with authority, you know, not popping up, uh, not uh, spilling the, the, the wine, you know, those kind of things. Um, very very important that you practice what you learn and this is all about lesson two i hope that you understand how important that is for you it's important for you because you are the people who has chosen to do this job and you now have to do as the best job possible so you can make you know the best money possible and live the most beautiful life you could ever live you know something like me all right guys thank you for being here thank you very much for learning you know you are the people of the future in this business we have to put this business our profession you know prof on a completely different level you now those yes in the restaurant will have to start appreciating it, everything that we do you know and once we do it really professional job with finesse with authority they will start changing their mind they will start talking about our job in a different way all right thank you guys take care stay out of trouble work hard make good money enjoy life i see you on lesson three ciao take care peace green salad with french dressing thank you very much